Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron. This is Scott. This is Tucker. And today we're going to talk about what is the good news of the gospel. All right, so thanks for tuning back in for this episode. Today we're going to talk about what is the good news uh, of the gospel. Um, this is the season finale. and We've been uh, 27 episodes. This is the 27th. And so we were talking about a topic, and we're like, what is the episode that we have to talk about? And of course, we all came back with, well, the gospel. We have to talk yeah. about the good news of Jesus Christ, because that's really the like scarlet thread of redemption from Genesis chapter 3, when sin entered, and Genesis 3.15 the first, what someone called the messianic promise, the first one, all the way up through, you know, the book of Revelation, that in the end, Jesus wins. That's pretty yeah. much the summary of that book is no matter what evil comes, Jesus is going to win. And really everything in between that, uh, it all discusses that. It's all about the gospel. So we're going to talk about the gospel before we launch into this episode. Tucker wants to share something about a project that we've been working on. Yeah. So we've been working on a new film series. What we're we're going to call the Authentic Christian spinoff. Um, it's a new film series called The Campfire Stories. And we pretty much went camping. And it's a cinematic storytelling of that experience of being out in the woods, um, telling these Bible stories, kind of bringing it all back to um, being in nature, seeing God's creation, seeing this campfire, seeing camping. Um, and then through stories, we're going to tell and link it back to the Bible. So um, it's been really fun. Um, we're excited for you to see it. This will be the 27th episode of this podcast. It's going to end for this year, um, we're going to return next summer for season two. Um, the campfire stories will pick up next week in replace of this. So um, January, the first Wednesday, we uh, we hope you like the campfire stories. That's awesome. We're excited about it. Yeah. All right. So thank you all so much, like we said, for tuning in this whole first season. Uh, and so let's go ahead and launch into this. So the season finale, what is uh, the gospel, the good news? Yeah. And one of the passages that we'll start with is is by reading 1 Corinthians 15. Um verses one through about six, because when you ask most people what the gospel is, they'll say the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. I think it's also important to add in there what first Corinthians one through six does with which it talks about witnesses. It wasn't something that was in, done in a corner, right? It was something that was done publicly and Jesus appeared to people. And so that word, we talked about this in one of the previous episodes, but we'll talk about it again really quickly. I'll bring it up. In Mark chapter 1, it talks about the good news, uh, which is the gospel, the euangelion. We look at that as a religious word. At the time when it first was being used in the first century, it was really a political word. Because when a Roman governor, a Roman emperor, would win in his kingdom, like he would conquer in war, he would send out heralds to preach the good news of the Roman emperor, this Roman kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's really the word that they use in Mark chapter 1. So like, it's almost like saying, well, you know, the good news of the Roman empire, that kingdom being preached, there's actually better news. And that is not just of one earthly kingdom like the Romans, but of a spiritual kingdom, God's kingdom on earth, which is being preached. And it's Jesus is the king, right? That's the message of the kingdom. Jesus is the king. Yeah. And we are the kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. So that's what that word gospel first century wise meant. Like, it's like Mark one fourteen talks about that. And yeah. after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee for preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Yeah, God's kingdom's back. All these people <laughs> who have been claiming to be representing God, who the Pharisees, the scribes, who were doing a bad job at it, they were making themselves king. Um, as Michael Height said in a great Mark course that I watched recently, he talked about how, you know, when you make the rules, you think you're the king. And Michael Height talked about how, whenever these people in the first century, Matthew fifteen six or nine, were making their own doctrines and teaching them as the commandments of God, they were putting themselves in the place of king. And Michael kept saying, Jesus comes to say, no, I'm the king. <laughs> I'm taking things back over. I'm making them the, the way that I want them. That's what Jesus did in yeah. his public ministry. And so, okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 6, and read uh, what it says. Um, Tucker, do you have it? Yeah, I got it. All right, read uh, verses 1 through 6. All right, moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that he was seen by over five hundred brethren at once, and of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. Yeah, I yeah, think that's well, verse, Okay, verse six. Keep reading verse seven <laughs> okay. and eight. I told After, you one through six, but no, read okay. seven and eight. After that, he is seen by James, then by all the apostles, then last of all, he is 
was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. Okay, so let's we'll go through this really quickly, and then we're actually going to go back and dive into what he's saying. Like we're going to mm-hmm. look at some of the aspects he summarizes here. So, brethren, he declares to you the gospel, the good news, which he had preached to them, which they had received, mm-hmm. and in which you stand. He means you're you're continue you're following the gospel. You're still living in it. You haven't gotten rid of Christ's doctrine. Verse two, by which you uh, also you are saved if you hold fast to the word that I preached to you unless you believed in vain. You have to hold fast to the gospel. Yeah. You you can believe in vain. I mean, Paul literally, that's exactly what he says right here. Mm-hmm. There's some people that say, well, you really can't. Paul meant what he said. <laughs> he said in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, that he had to buffet his body lest he become a castaway, right? Now, if Paul's saying that, we should all take warn, warnings, take those warnings seriously, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, so verse 3. I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Whenever we get finished this section, we're going to talk about how the Old Testament prophecy, we're not going to have enough time to talk at all, but it pointed to Jesus, right? It all pointed to this Messiah, this yeah. Redeemer, okay? Died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, okay? It's interesting, too, that he was buried, I think, his aorist, which means he was buried once, right? He was buried. That he uh, rose again, which I think is perfect tense, which means he rose again and he's still alive, right? Mm. So I even think it says died in verse 3. Christ died, I think that's aorist, so he died once for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, aorist, died once, and that he rose again, perfect. It's like he died, he was buried, and he rose again, he's still alive, okay? The third day, according to the scriptures, was also prophesied, okay? He was seen by Cephas. The next four verses go through all these witnesses, okay? It even says, the greater part who remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep, some have died. Yeah. So it's basically saying, look, go ask everybody. This wasn't done in a corner. This isn't secret. You can go ask people. Go ask the people that saw the resurrected bodies after the resurrection of Jesus. Go ask them, hey, do you remember when all those dead bodies resurrected and walked into the town and everybody saw them? Yeah. Do you remember that? Everybody did. There was witnesses. So we're going to break that down and try to just talk about those aspects of it. Um, so we talked about sin started where? Sin started in the garden, right? In the garden. What happened? What happened there and what was <clears throat> the first, you say, messianic um, promise um, that Genesis chapter three. Yeah, that the seed was going to uh, have his heel bruised, and that he would bruise the head of the serpent. That's right. All right, I'm I'm kind of short sure. it a little bit. Sure. Well, yeah. we need to for time, but yeah. you're right. So Genesis three fifteen is what we're referencing, and it mm-hmm. promised there would come a seed. Okay, Galatians three sixteen. Let me flip over there and tell you what that seed was that was promised. All right, the Jews thought it was them. They thought they were the seed. Right. And Paul in Galatians is kind of correcting some things. Galatians chapter 3 and verse uh, 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. God promised Abraham, you're going to have a seed, and it's going to be as many as the stars in the heaven, right? Okay, they thought it was them. He says this. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say unto seeds as of many, but as to one and to your seed, which is Christ. All right? So he's referencing that Jesus Christ is that seed, that mm-hmm. the promises were made to Abraham in Genesis 12 and other places in the Old Testament, all right? So Jesus comes into the comes into the, the earth, all right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're going to be summarizing because the whole Old Testament deals with this according to the Scriptures. So Jesus comes uh, onto the world yeah. for what per, what specific reason? What Why did he have to come to this earth? Jesus he came to, to save us. That's right. From, from our, our what? From our sins. That's right. Romans 3, 24 through 27, uses a phrase that says that God could be the just and the justifier. Go to Romans 3. I want to read that. It talks about Jesus having to be a propitiation for us. All right. So Romans chapter 3, I know we're moving fast, but there's so much to cover. I'm trying to get to the trial, the arrest, and the crucifixion of Jesus. All right. Let's pick up in uh, Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone's got sin. Chapter 6 and verse 23 will later say the wages of sin is what? Death. Spiritual death, okay? All right. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus had to come to redeem us, right? To bring us, to buy us back. That's what that word means, to buy us back. The devil had us captive because of our sin, and God had to buy us back. How did he do that? Verse 25, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood, all right? 
The word propitiation really just means the big Bible word, Mm -hmm. the satisfaction of the justice of God. It's used in the Septuagint of the Old Testament of like the mercy seat, all right? So propitiation by his blood, okay, through faith. Faith connects us with the blood, all right? To demonstrate his righteousness, God's righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. To demonstrate at the present time. So in the Old Testament, lots of sins committed. God looked over those because he knew what was coming in the future, which is Christ, okay? To demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be the just and justifier of the one who has faith in Christ. God has to be just. It's part of his nature. He has to punish sin. But he also has to be the justifier. So God literally, through Jesus, says, I'm still just, I still punish sin, but I'm the one that did it for you. I punished, I basically, Jesus took that, paid that sacrifice with his blood, right? Yeah. So that leads us to the, the purpose of Jesus coming, which was the remission of our sins, mm-hmm. to seek and save the lost, Luke 19.10. That's our intro. Mm-hmm. Let's Now, what I want to do is we know Jesus left heaven, Philippians yeah. 2, 5 through 9, emptied himself, lived a perfect life. But I want to talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Because when you talk about the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Let's talk about that. Okay. Let's go to, let's start in John 18. John 18 All right. is the arrest of Jesus. Somebody want to read John 18, 1 through 4? Sure. We're going to summarize a lot of this. We're going to read some of it. Mm-hmm. So if you're studying on your own, we're going to give you big sections of Scripture that you can read on your own and study to get a full picture of the last night and a half of Jesus' life. So John 18, 1 through 4. 1 through 4. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, or Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered, and his disciples, and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Thither. I'm oh, sorry. Met there. <laughs> Met there yeah. with his disciples, yeah. yeah. Uh, Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Okay. So Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, he's had a couple times where he's been praying with his disciples. You read about that in the different accounts. And then he looks up, mm-hmm. and he sees a mob coming at him with torches. What would you think? I would be scared out of my mind. And verse 4 says he knew what? Did Jesus not know what was going to happen? What's he, verse 4 say? He knew. No, he, knew. Yeah, he knew. Knowing all things that would come upon him. What would you do? I would probably tear up a little bit and pray really hard. Or run. I yeah, mean, definitely I, run. I, I'm like, I'm like, man, Tucker, you're better than me. I don't know what I'd do. If I knew there was a mob coming to torture me. I'd be gone. Would I run up over Be- uh, up over the Mount of Olives to Bethany? I don't know. There are, um, I may have said this in other episodes. If you go, go search on Google, open up Garden of Gethsemane. It's like in a valley. Mm-hmm. And you'll see some pictures where you can see the walls of Jerusalem. Some people say it would like take 5, 10, 15 minutes for that crowd to like weave their way down into the garden. For 5, 10, 15 minutes, Jesus sits there seeing this mob coming with torches, knowing that you created them. You're the creator, and they're coming to torture you and put you to death. But you have to do it. Mm. He prayed in the garden. Look, there's any way, Lord, take this away, but yeah, not my will, but thine. Cup. Take this cup from me. And God said, no. Yes. You, ha- you have this, this part is, of the plan. This is the only way. It's the only way. The only way. Yeah. So yeah. Jesus, okay, so he's arrested, all right? Um, let's In verse 18, let's keep skipping a little bit. Um, verse 10, Simon Peter pulls a sword, struck the high priest's servant, cut off his ear. The servant's name was Malchus, all right? Now Luke twenty two fifty one says Jesus picked up the ear and healed him, all right? It's not in this account. And then verse 11, Jesus said, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? He knew that he had to drink the cup, yeah. right? So they arrest him. Okay, um, verse twelve. Tucker, read uh, read verses twelve and fourteen. Okay. Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him, and they had led him away to Annas first. What's Annas? That? Yeah, Annas. Annas. For he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Okay, so Annas was the high priest originally. Okay, like, mm-hmm. and then I think he was a high priest from like nine AD to fifteen. Yeah. And then the Roman emperors took him. The Roman government took him out and put his son-in-law Caiaphas in. Hmm. So they took him to Annas first because they really thought Annas was like the legitimate <coughs> high priest. And then, a- so he goes to Annas first, and then after that, he goes to Caiaphas. Okay, so he goes to Annas first. Yeah. Um, skip down to verse nineteen. This is Annas. Okay, he's before Annas. All right. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. 
Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet, and in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I had said to them, and indeed they know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, uh, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Okay. So it says the high priest twice. That's why. There's two high priests. Annas was the one that they thought was the legitimate one, the mm-hmm. Jews did, because he was the real high priest. But Rome said, no, no, you're not the high priest anymore. They made Caiaphas. So Rome appointed Caiaphas, but Annas they really thought. So they take him to Annas first, okay, middle of the night. Annas wasn't even the high priest. That's illegal. Verse 22, how do they treat him? Well, they punched him. They struck him yeah. with yeah. the palm of his hand, saying, do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus is already arrested illegally. Then they beat him in an illegal trial. Doesn't get any better for him, right? Just think about this. When you're, if you're watching this, if you're not a Christian, this is what Jesus went through for you. If you are a Christian, this is what Jesus went through for you. Yeah. He went through this for all men. He came to become the Savior of all men. First John 2, 2 talks about that, okay? I think it's at the propitiation for not only us Christians, but all those, okay? I think it's First John 2, 2. If it's not, Google it. Um, now, then, verse 24, he was sent to Caiaphas, okay? This episode, obviously, I want to do some reading. God yeah. chose to give his message to us, how? In a book. What do you do with the book? <laughs> you read it, yeah. all right? Go to Matthew 26, because that's where you get the most details of the interview with Caiaphas, the, the trial. Jesus faces the Sanhedrin here. All right, verse 57. And those who had laid hold of Jesus, this is Matthew 26, 57, led him away to Caiaphas, or Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. But Peter followed at a distance to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now listen to verse 59. This is the treatment of Jesus at his second place of being tried. Now the chief priests, the elders, and all the council saw it. What kind of testimony? False. False witness. False. What kind of, how, how honest is that? You're in a courtroom and you're like, hey, let's try to find some false witnesses. They sought false testimony to put him to death, but found none, even though many false witnesses came forward. To, uh, verse, well, second half of that. But at last, two false witnesses came forward and said, this fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Likely, John 2, 19, he said he would destroy the temple. He's talking about the temple of his body, John 2, 21. All right. Skip down. I want, to, I want to focus on the treatment of Jesus. Now, you'll notice if you read this for yourself after we finish, they keep changing his charges. First, they say, you're going to destroy the temple. Then they don't have any evidence, so it's blasphemy. Then later when they take in Luke 23 to Pilate, they change it again. We'll get there in a second. R- read verse 67, Scott. Look okay. at the treatment at this second trial. Then did they spit in his face and buffet him, and some smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto this, thou Christ. Who is he that struck thee? <laughs> Spit on him this time. Spat on him. Beat him. Struck him with the palms and said, prophesy to us, Christ. Yeah, mocked. Mocked him. Yeah. You, we know the power Jesus had. Yeah. He could have stopped it. I, I have wanted for years a graphic designer, and I've never asked anybody to do it. I've wanted a graphic designer. If anybody watching this episode is a graphic designer and you could do this, that would be super cool. Maybe Tucker could do it. I want to have a picture of the cross or even them like this point where they're spitting in his face and you've got God the Father in heaven with his arms like this holding back all of these angels with swords ready to just wipe out these people doing this to Jesus. And Scott made a point. We talked about this in another episode that was really cool. You said, imagine the angels. How fired up would the angels be? That's their creator. That's their God too. And they're doing this. First Kings, I think it's First Kings nineteen thirty five, maybe. I can't remember. Second Kings nineteen thirty five. Yeah, just um, where they killed one hundred eighty one angel killed one hundred eighty five thousand people in one night. I think about the contrast of how they're treating him versus the, and it's a different situation, of course. But Isaiah chapter six verse five, uh, the way he reacts in his vision, he says, "Woe is to me, mm. for I'm undone." Because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. If they had witnessed, if they if they fully, they surely didn't realize, to some degree. I mean, they had every reason to know. They had every reason to believe. He had mm-hmm. given them plenty. He had mm-hmm. taught. He had done miracles. Uh, he had proved that he was who he was saying he was. But it's it's almost as if, like, can you imagine someone 
seeing him in his full glory, if you want to say it that way, in his his form w- before he was before he put himself into a human body, and then imagine them treating this way. Go this read. Way to God. I'm coming right back to you. Go read. Pause this video. Go read Isaiah chapter six. See this magnificent description of this God in the throne room. And then look at John 12, 41. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. That's a vision of Jesus yeah. before he came to earth and received the name Jesus. Exactly. It was the word. And Scott's saying that is the person who emptied himself, took on this tent, this body, and went through this. Yeah, th- this this person that Isaiah is, is fearful. A, a man who is, by all accounts, a godly man, mm-hmm. God's prophet, a man who fears God and who has sought to try to do right throughout his life, Isaiah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sees him and says, Woe unto me, I am undone mm-hmm. when he comes into that presence, at least in that vision. Yeah. And then you have these men who propose or, 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 or purport themselves to be godly men, purport themselves to be teachers of Israel and righteous and godly men, and they come into the actual physical presence of this same being that Isaiah mm-hmm. is describing, and they treat him this way. They spit in his face. That's yeah. Spitting is so disrespectful. It's one thing. I don't know. Would I rather someone spit on me or punch me? I don't know. But mm-hmm. Jesus goes through all that, and he could literally at any time, he could call those angels. He talked about Peter when Peter drew a sword. Lord, shall we strike with the sword, Luke's account says. And Jesus in Matthew 26, I think, says, Peter. I could call my father. I could call 12 legions of angels, 60,000 angels. I don't need your little sword. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, literally, I could wipe out. We did that in the other episode. If you do that math, 60,000 uh, angels times 185,000 angels or people that one angel killed in the Old Testament, 11 billion. And that's nothing. God could have wiped out everybody. And you got the God, God the Father holding back those armies. I can just see these angels with glittering swords wanting to just wipe it out. And God the yeah. Father saying, it's the plan. You have to let it go. Now, one day, 2 Thessalonians says God's going to go like this and let those angels come and inflict his wrath on those who don't know God and don't obey the what? Gospel. The gospel 2 yeah. Thessalonians 1, yeah. 6 through 9. Okay. All right. Okay. So they spat on him. They struck him saying, prophesy. All right. Now, we're going to skip over Peter denying Jesus. Go to Matthew 27, 1. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders and the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. When they bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Goes to Pontius Pilate. He's been to Annas. He's been to Caiaphas throughout the night, which was, guess what? Illegal. It was illegal to have a trial overnight. You can go read it, the first century writings. Um, Verse 27, when morning came. Now go to Luke 23. Luke 23 picks up. I think Luke 23 is the most detailed account, at least for part of this. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network, or GBN for short. You can hop on the App Store, search Gospel Broadcasting Network, and you can download the app. And there's this show, many other great shows that you can watch or listen to and uh, start learning more about the Bible and uh, why we're here, what our purpose is. Thanks for listening. So he goes to Annas. He's arrested illegally, no warrants. In the middle of the night, take him to Annas, beat him. Take him to Caiaphas, Matthew 26, beat him, spit on him. And then uh, go to Luke 23. They finally take him to Pilate. Okay? Tucker, you're going to read Luke 23. Listen to what they accuse him of. They accuse him of uh, destroying the temple, then blasphemy. Guess what? When they take him to Pilate, they change his charge because Pilate could care less about destroying their Jewish temple. He could care less about blasphemy. But look at what they then accuse him of. Luke 23, read verses 1 through 3. Okay. Then the whole multitude of them arose, led him to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidden to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. When did Jesus say don't pay taxes? Never. Never. He, he always said, said pay opposite. taxes. Yeah. Matthew twenty two twenty one, Mark twelve seventeen, Luke twenty twenty five. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Mm-hmm. Now they're lying about it. They've changed yeah. his charge three times. If, I, if Scott got arrested for murder and they can't find evidence, so they say, oh, well, you didn't murder, but you raped somebody. Oh, no evidence? Okay, you didn't rape somebody. You cheated on your taxes. You can't change charges in the middle, in the middle of a trial. They would laugh you, they'd laugh you out of the courtroom. They said, get out of here. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah. keep going. I don't oh, know. Yeah, it was just one verse. Okay. Yeah. Verse three, then Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him and said, It is as you say. Okay. So we're gonna I'm gonna have to move it quickly. Look at verse four. I find no fault in the man. Innocent number one, right? Then they send him to Herod, okay, where Herod says that he find, doesn't find him guilty. Okay. Send him back to Pilate. You're gonna have to read this for yourself because we don't have time to cover it all. Look at verse 14. 
I have found no fault in this man. Right? Mm -hmm. Verse 15. No, neither did Herod. Herod, he was innocent before Herod too. I sent him back to him. Nothing deserving of death has been done. 15. Verse 7, 16. I'll chastise him. I'm going to scourge him. I'll beat him. I'll release him. And the people chant, give us who? Barabbas. 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 Bar, son of Abba, the father. Son of the father, the devil. That's what I think. John 8, 34. So instead of the son of God, they want this evil man who was actually guilty of guess what? Murder. What they accused Jesus of in Luke 23. Yeah. He was perverting the nation. Well, guess what Barabbas was guilty of? Rebellion. Yeah. Give us the guy who's actually guilty of what we're saying you should kill Jesus for, but kill Jesus who actually didn't do it. We just made it up. Hmm. So, Isn't there an interesting uh, thought there, illustration <laughs> to uh, how he's taking the place? Yeah, he's taking the place. Yeah, The one who deserved the punishment, Jesus takes his place. Right. Jesus took whose place? Ours. Yeah. Mine. He took that yeah. punishment. John 18, 1, I think it is, says that the Jews didn't want to go in. No, not John 18, 1. Anyway, Jesus, the Jews didn't want to go into Pilate because they might be defiled. Is that not laughable? They didn't want to be defiled by going into Pilate, yet they do all this to Jesus. All right. Anyway, basically Pilate washes his hands. He sends Jesus to the cross. Jesus on the cross bears the punishment for our sins, sheds his blood, is buried, resurrected, and we'll probably have to do a, a multiplicity of lessons, but we just don't have time to cover it. Jesus did all that, and now he says, if you want to have my blood wash away your sins that I shed on the cross, you have to believe in me, repent of your sins, confess Christ, be baptized in water. Mm -hmm. Romans 6, you reenact the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. His blood washes away your sins. Revelation 1, 5, Acts twenty two sixteen, and you'll be added to his church. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. Yeah. And that's what we want you to be members of, the New yeah. Testament church. Guys, we've got a minute. 20 and 30 goes by quick. It does. We've got a minute and 20 seconds. What do you want to say about the end of season one? Yeah. Um, so let's see. We started with why we're here, mm -hmm. you know, how to get into, how to become That's a Christian, right. how to get in Jesus' this is, church. This is why we're here. Yeah. This is why we're here. It points all the way back. It's all about Jesus. You know, if um, mm -hmm. it just planning for this reminded me, like if I would have never got a phone call from my grandfather, who would have, I would have ended up meeting my wife, who would have shared me the gospel. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. I would have gone to hell. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's what we're offering here to you guys. It's just that, Hey, if you're, if you're not a Christian, you can become one today. Yeah. Scott. Yeah, um, just thinking about the season, you know, I'm really grateful to have been a part of it. I'm grateful for everybody that came along, viewed and listened, and for everybody that interacted with us in the comments and messages. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really appreciate you. We appreciate yeah. the chance to be here with you and to talk about these things, and we really hope that we've been useful. We're grateful for the topics you've suggested. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We thank you guys for watching. The very end of the New Testament, Revelation 22 and verse 20. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Jesus is coming back, and we don't know when. Yeah. Matthew 24, 36, no one knows the day of the hour. Mark 13 says not even Jesus knew when he was on earth. So we don't know, but we want you to be ready. So if you're not ready, or even if you think you are, but you want to be sure, reach out and contact us. We'd love to talk with you, love to study with you. Yeah. And thank you so much for watching all these episodes of Season 1 of the Authentic Christian Podcast. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today.